The New Testament Church welcomes you to join us as Pastor Majid Saloum leads us in seeking a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, changing us from glory to glory. Amen. The title of my message is Your Faith Will Be Tested, Will Be Put to the Test. Your Faith Will Be Put to the Test. This is a prophecy. I'm prophesying that if you're a believer, your faith is going to be tried. We're reading in Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 4 from the complete Jewish Bible translation. After these things, God tested Abraham. Or we say Abraham, but uh, the Jews call him Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. And he answered, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Yitzhak. And Yitzhak means laughter in Hebrew. So every time people call you Yitzhak, or we have it transliterated into English, Isaac. I don't know how that happened, but really the original is Yitzhak, laughter. Every time somebody calls you that, uh, laughter, uh, they're not really mocking you. They're just having a good time. <laughs> he said, uh, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Yitzhak, and go to the land of Moriah. There you are to offer him a burnt offering and a mountain that I will point, point out to you. Abraham got up in the morning, early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, together with Yitzhak, his son. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, departed, and went toward the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place in the distance. Now going back to Genesis 22, verses 10 through 12, we're reading from King James Version this time. Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Lay not your hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. First Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through the manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The trying of your faith is better than money. In fact, in heaven, uh, there is no money. It's just faith. In heaven, everybody lives by faith because they practiced it down here on earth.
1 Peter 4, 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened to you. Don't think it's strange. When you're tried, when you're put into the fiery trial, you're going to be tried. You're going to be tested. Welcome to the family of God. You know, the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Well, guess what? If you're not tried, you're not going to show your faith. So you have to go through the trial. And God intends for you to be tried so that he will enlarge you, so that he will build your character. How many know that the reason we have to believe is to build character? Some people take it the wrong way and they get upset with God because they're going through a trial. They get upset with God and they they think that's going to solve the problem. What's going to solve the problem is believing God, trusting God that he will take you through it and give you the power to overcome and give you the victory through it all. Amen. Amen. So, let me say this. Faith does not exempt a person from going through a trial. Real faith is proven in the fiery furnace and in the time of adversity. People will know that you believe God when you go through some things and maintain your integrity while persevering. That's how people know you have faith. In Hebrews 11, God salutes the men and women of faith. We have a lot of men and women of faith in Hebrews 11. Famous men and women that believed God and trusted God through every situation and every difficulty. Their faith was not exemplified by the apparel or the camel they rode. But by their walk. Like Job of old when he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Job 13, 15. Your faith will have to stand the test sooner or later. So I, I, I tell you, uh, you ought to rejoice. And that's biblical, by the way. Rejoice when the trial comes because that's what the scripture says. Count it all joy. You know, that means rejoice. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations and trials. For the trying of your faith worketh endurance. It develops spiritual muscles. Just like you exercise physically to build up physical muscles, you exercise spiritually to build up physical, I mean spiritual muscles. We need faith, but we need the trial. Don't ask for trials. Don't pray for trials. And don't ask God to increase your faith. 
because if you do, I mean, you can if you want to, but if you ask for an increase in faith, guess what? The minute you finish, a trial comes your way. I don't want to ask any more than what I'm supposed to get, folks. Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to ask God for more faith? If you have faith as much as a mustard seed, that's all you need. You want more faith? That means more trials. Somebody is happy about that. No matter who you are, no matter how nice you look or how beautiful you are, no matter how much money you have or how good you are, no matter how much you pray and fast, no matter how much you prophesy, no matter how talented or gifted, no matter how prolific or profound, no matter how many times they call on you to sing or to play, you're still going to have trials and tribulations. So you may not like this church anymore because I'm telling you the way it is. You want somebody who's going to tell you the truth and not lie to you and not cover it up. Okay? Jesus said in John 16, 33, These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. What you're going to have in the world? Tribulation. But, remember this part, be of good cheer. Why? I have overcome the world. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have situations. You're going to have to overcome some things. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Uh, let me tell you this. Uh, I mean, some of you have already gone through trials and testings. Uh, let me say this. If God has not been your thermostat in your fiery furnace, you would have burned up a long time ago. You know, something about God, he will put barriers in front of your enemy and tell him, stop right now. I like that about God. He will let Satan know when to get off of you. He will tell the enemy, not another step. Go no further. Halt. Now, we can't talk about faith without talking about the father of our faith, Father Abraham. As the Jews call him, Abraham. And Abraham means the father of many nations. He is not the father of one particular nation. He is the father of many nations, folks. Let me tell you this. It's being preached out there that Abraham is the father of one nation and is the most important nation as far as God is concerned. I tell you, there is not one nation above another nation as far as God is concerned. There is no race above another race as far as God is concerned. We're all the same. God is not a respecter of persons. Listen, if you're saved, you're the best person as far as God's concerned. And if you're not saved, I don't care if you're Muslim, Jew, or what. You're not accepted. 
unless you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You're not in God unless you are in Christ. There's no other way. So don't tell me and don't sell me something that the Bible doesn't talk about and the Bible is not clear about. Abraham is a father of many nations. As a matter of fact, literally speaking, he was married to Sarah and he produced Ishmael before Isaac came. And Ishmael became the father of a, a nation. And Esau, the son of Isaac, also became uh, the father of another nation. And, and, and the two of them intermarried, like uh, their children and all of that. And they became the, the parents and the forefathers of, of the Arab nations in the Middle East. They're all the seed of Abraham, folks. And, and Jacob came from Isaac. He's the seed of Abraham. But he's not the only seed. There are many nations. Abraham marries Keturah at age 140 and has six more sons. And that's another nation. <laughs> when he was a hundred, he couldn't have children, the poor guy. <laughs> but he revived and went into his youth at age 140. Talk about when God heals, he heals. <laughs> and that was because of Abraham's faith. We're talking about a man that believed God, believed that God will raise the dead. How did he believe that God can bring somebody alive out of the dead? Because the Bible says that in, in Romans chapter 4, that Abraham did not look at his body being dead, neither did he look at the womb of Sarah being dead. They both could not produce children. But out of two dead people, God provided Isaac that came out of two dead people. Amen. And it was because of Abraham's faith. Amen. Let me tell you this. No matter what the world says, no matter what your circumstances are, if you trust in the living God, if you stand on the word of God, if you believe the word of God, God is going to turn things upside down for you. God is going to move on your behalf and he's going to bring life out of the dead. If it's a dead situation. Sometimes people get to the end of the rope and they say, well, I'm giving up. And I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you today and prophesy to you that God can turn a situation around, that God can bring something out of something that is dead and bring forth life. Because Abraham is the father of many nations, but he's the father of the Christian most of all. Because when you believe in Jesus, we are the seed of Abraham by faith in Christ Jesus. Our father believed God for the impossible. Yeah. We are supposed to be like father, like son. We are men and women of faith. We're going to believe God. We're going to believe the promises of God. We're not going to be deterred by uh, the bad news or evil report that came to us because the Bible says in Isaiah 53, who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Did you believe his report? I believe his report. I believe the report of the Lord. The, the report of the Lord says, by whose stripes I am healed. The report of the Lord says he will take my marriage and heal it if it's sick. 
The report of the Lord says he will heal relationships. The report of the Lord says that he can supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He is the God of the living. He is not the God of the dead. He can heal cancer. He can heal any disease. Not only can he do it, but he will do it if there is faith. If you need a job, he'd, he'd supply you with a job. One need. You got to look for one, though. Don't stay home and say, well, if he wants to supply me with a job, he'll, he'll bring it to my house. I tell you, there, there was a woman one time, she got the baptism of the Spirit in a house meeting. I was teaching out. She, she, was, she belonged to a Christian Alliance Church, and I didn't know her. She didn't know me. I just prayed for her that one night that I met her, and she went out. After the baptism of the Spirit, she went out and prayed for a lady who'd, whose arm was broken. And she had cast on her arm, so the both of them proceeded to take the cast off. Now, they never asked me. It wasn't that I would say anything about that, but they took the cast off and the woman moved her arm and uh, she was fine. Went back and had the x-rays and there was no, no broken bones in her arm. So the pastor of the uh, church called me up and asked me if I, he can take me out to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to know what I believe. I said, I believe what your author believed, the, the, the founder of the Christian Missionary Alliance Church. He believed in divine healing, and that's what I believe. I said, but I, I want to tell you, I didn't instruct this woman what to do. <laughs> Glory be to God. So Abraham is the father of faith. Well, you know what Joshua was told? He says, every place that the sole of your foot treads upon, that have I given to you. It's your possession. Every place you, you stand on. Every place that If you can stand against the opposition by believing me, God says, it's yours. If you can stand against the opposition, stand firm by believing God. You're going to possess it. You're going to possess the land. You're going to possess the promise. The promise is yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know what Abraham told the servants that went with him when he went on a three-day journey to offer Isaac as a sacrifice? He said to them, we're going to go yonder. He told the servants, you stay here. Me and the lad going to go yonder and worship. And then we're going to come back and we're going to return. Now, he knew he was going to sacrifice Isaac. How is Isaac going to come back? That's because he believed God was going to raise him from the dead. Well, he believed the first time that out of two dead people, Isaac came forth. Now, the second time is just as easy to believe God, the God of resurrection, that he's going to raise Isaac from the dead when he kills him. So he said, we're coming back. We're going to go worship. I tell you what, if you have a trial that you're going through, if you have a difficulty, if you have a situation in your life that is, seems to be impossible, you better go worship and say, I'm coming back and coming out of this mess and coming out of this situation. God is going to turn it around. I'm going to go worship and I'm coming back. 
We are going to return. The lad and I are going to return. Praise God. Hallelujah. I, I'm here to encourage you folks. I'm not 30 years old anymore. When I was 30, they told me when you're 50 or 60, you're not going to preach this way. I'm still preaching the same way because I believe the word of God. Listen, whether I receive it or not, it's the word of God, and I'm here to tell you what the word of God says, and you want to know, and you want to hear, not my opinion, but God's opinion. And God says, when you believe me, I'm going to give you the impossible. Because the Bible says, with God, all things are possible, and all things are possible to him that believeth. Do you believe? Pastor gets criticized because it sounds like I'm telling somebody you're not believing. Watch what Jesus told the disciples. After he calmed the storm, he turned to them. He says, where is your faith? So you talk about pastor. Watch what Jesus did. He's the, he's the shepherd of the sheep. He rebuked them for their lack of faith. Today we want to, you know, bring the gospel down to the level of the new society. It can't happen. The gospel is the gospel. The power of God is the power of God. The word of God is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. God is looking for people who will trust him and believe him. When the Son of Man will come back to earth, shall he find faith on the earth. So he's here with us. Today he's encouraging us. Just like Father Abraham who believed God for the resurrection of the dead. <clears throat> and God gave us Isaac. He received Isaac back as a type of resurrection. Because God said, don't kill him. I see your heart. You're good. You're, you're believing me. Actually, God didn't do it for himself because he knew what God, what Abraham was going to do. He did it for us so that we will see what a man of God should do. I don't believe God wanted to know. I mean, God knows everything. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. We would appreciate your prayerful support of our ministry. You're welcome to join us at the New Testament Church, 6772 Lamphere Road in Rome, Fridays at 730 and Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloon, may the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.